Most of us have had to get a dental filling or two over the years. And a large problem is that they don't last very long. In fact, it often happens that a filling falls out, leaving you with a hole in your tooth and a dire need for a dentist appointment. A few weeks ago, this happened to me. A dental filling I got 10 years ago gave in. And as I sat there in my dentist's waiting room, I started to wonder if I could predict how long until this new filling fell out. After returning home, I decided to contact some of my friends and conduct a bit of a study. I asked nine friends to recall when they last got a dental filling and how long it lasted. Now I can plot the collected data as a diagram, marking the years from 2012 to 2022 on the x-axis and drawing each of my friends' fillings lifespan as a line spanning from the year they got it to the year they lost it. For example, Bert got a dental filling in 2012, which lasted until 2015, and Faye got hers in 2014, and it lasted until 2020. Next, I'll mark the friends whose dental fillings fell out with a cross. Some of my friends haven't lost their filling yet, and one of them, Harry, got it changed before it had the chance to fall out. Now, their experiences still tell us something about the lifespan of a dental filling. So, instead of discarding this data completely, I'll mark it with a circle. This is what we call censoring. Now, since I'm interested in how much time each dental filling lasted, and not the exact year when it fell out, assuming, of course, that 2007 wasn't a terrible year for dental fillings, I'll adjust the diagram by moving all the lines over to start at the same time of zero. Now let's open Excel and convert this diagram into a table. Also, I want to sort it so that Anthony, who held on to his filling the shortest, is first, and I'm last since I lost my filling after 10 years. Now I can include a column that marks whether the filling ended up falling out or not. I'll fill this column with ones for everyone I marked with an X on the diagram and zeros for everyone I marked with a circle. Now that I've prepared the data in a table, I want to go back to the question that started this whole thing. Can I predict how long until a new dental filling falls out? And intuitively, the probability of this happening gets larger over time because you know minor damages can add up over time. These damages, can be due to the type of filling and its interaction with the bacterial biofilm or your diet or saliva composition or any kind of mechanical forces. Now, when you want to visualize this kind of data, it's often a good idea to plot the probability of this event not occurring. In this case, the probability of a dental filling not falling out or surviving for X amount of time. So let's go ahead and plot what we call the survival curve. On the x-axis, we mark the time in years, and on the y-axis, the probability of the dental filling staying in place. Now, assuming your dentist did a good job, the probability of a filling staying in place as you leave the clinic is 100%. So I can mark a probability of 1 at a time of 0 on the graph. Next, I'll check out my data and see that as nobody lost a filling within a year, the probability of its survival stays at 1. However, in the second year, Anthony's filling fell out. So if 1 out of 10 at-risk fillings don't make it past 2 years, that means the probability of a filling staying in place is 9 over 10, or 0 0.9. Then the probability stays the same until the third year. And after three years, Bert's filling falls out and Chloe's data point gets censored. So in the third year, there are now nine people at risk because we're not counting Anthony anymore. And one person lost their filling. This means the probability of a filling falling out in the third year is one over nine, which is the same as saying its chance of survival is eight over nine. So, the probability of a dental filling surviving after three years is the probability of it surviving until the third year times the probability of it surviving the year itself. So that turns out to be 0 0.8.
from years three to four, the probability remains the same again. And after four years, David and Elle lost their feelings. So by now, Anthony and Harry have already lost theirs, and Chloe is no longer at risk either. So there's now seven people at risk. Notice that this is where we actually take into account Chloe's sensor data point. Okay, so the survival probability is now the previous 0 0.8 times the 5 over 7 chance of surviving the fourth year. And that works out to be 0 0.57. We can continue to make these small calculations and draw the steps until we reach the end of our 10-year observational window. What we get is a graph called the Kaplan-Meier plot. And it's one of the most useful plots in survival analysis. It shows us how the probability of survival changes over time. So for example, if we wanted to know at exactly what time the probability of survival drops to 50%, we can directly read it from the plot. Now this value is also called the median, and it's regarded with some significance, so it's often marked on these kinds of plots. It's now time to check if we can reproduce our manual analysis on a computer. So for this, we will be using Orange, a data mining tool that uses visual programming in the form of data analysis pipelines consisting of interconnected widgets. Now, I assume that you've already downloaded and installed Orange, but if not, you can find the link to the Orange homepage below. Or if you're entirely new to Orange, you're welcome to first watch a few of our introductory videos. So I'll run Orange and install the survival analysis add-on from the list of add-ons available in the options menu. I select survival analysis and click OK, and Orange will reload automatically. Now, let's load our small data set into Orange. I'll use the file widget and load the data from the file we created on our desktop. The time and event columns must be marked as meta features. Now, we can inspect the data in data table. Looks good. Then, we also have to inform Orange which are the time and event columns so that it knows it's dealing with the survival data. And we can do this with the as survival widget. Now, all that's left is to connect the output from as survival to the Kaplan-Meier widget. We can compare the plot that Orange made with the one we made manually and see that they are in fact the same. Congratulations! We've just covered the basic concepts of survival analysis. In this video, we use a toy data set to learn how to prepare survival data, what censoring is, and how to produce a Kaplan-Meier plot in Orange with just a few clicks. Now, usually survival data can consist of more than just the time and event column, but we'll explore additional features in our next video.